Santos. Gurave Kaura Chandrai Radikai Tadale Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Nunam Anandali Lamaya Vigrahaya He Mabadibit Tabi Sundaraya Tas my Maha Prima Rasapradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Bhaktya Vinna Aparada Lakshe Siptascha Kamadi Tauram Kamadi Kripa Maitam Saranam Prapanna Brindi Namaste Charanara Vindam Brindi Namaste Charanara Vindam Govinda Dhamo Dharma Dhaviti Govinda Dhamo Dharma Dhaviti Govinda Dhamo Dharma Dhaviti Govinda Dhamo Madhaviti Everyone He Krishna He Adava He Sakiti Govinda Dhamo Dharma Madhaviti Shalom Sundar Shikanda Shikan Sarahas Murali Manohara Radikarasikamama Kripanidhi Sukriya Charna King Karim Kuru Tavaivasmi Tavaivasmi Najivami Tayavina Iti Vikaya Devi Tam Namam Charnantikam I offer my Sastanya Dandava to Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Paramarad to my Guru Pada Padma, Nitilila Pravisht Om Vishnu Pada, Akshtotarastrasi, Rupanuga Acharya Varya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Jai. No echo. Turn. It's just normal. Just okay, let me turn on the volume. Just turn it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev, Jusila Prabhupada, and all of our Sri Rubanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. Jai. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vanchakalpatur, Kripas, Indubayavaja. Yesterday we had a spontaneous program and today is the official first day. So, as it was the custom of my Gurudev, when he used to come to a place on the first day, he always like to speak about Guru Tattva because there are so many tattvas that must be understood in this path of bhakti Jiva Tattva, Maya Tattva, Bhagavad Tattva, Rasa Tattva, Lila Tattva and so on but the first and most important tattva is Guru Tattva if one can understand Guru Tattva the essence of Guru Tattva, then all the other tattvas, they will be revealed to that person. But if a person fails to understand Guru Tattva, then they will also fail to understand anything else. Mm-hmm. See, Krishna told Udhav, Anadya Vidya Yukta Sya Purusha Satma Vedanam Swato Na Sambhavad Anyas Tattva Gyo Gyanado Bhavet 
The meaning is that every soul in this material world who is conditioned, they have been in avidya, in a state of ignorance, anadi. Anadi means without any beginning. Hmm? What is avidya? Ignorance. Avidya means avidya, the absence of with knowledge. Hmm? So it is above. The word above in Sanskrit means absence. It's very we cannot conceive of it. Hmm? We are in a state of the above, the absence of awareness of God. Hmm? Where is God? Everywhere. But we are not aware. Hmm? Like fish, two fish swimming in the water. One fish said to the other one, hmm? Do you believe in water? The other one, no, no. Never seen water. Hmm? We, everywhere we are existing within, in this world, within the Virat Rup of, of the Paramatma. God is everywhere. There is nothing which is separate from God. Hmm? So Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Vahunam Janmanamante Ganavamam Prabhadete Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samatma Sudulabha. After many births and deaths, when one comes to Gyan, Vidya, knowledge, hmm? he fully surrenders to me, Krishna said, because he realizes, Vasudeva Sarvamiti, I am everything, I am everywhere. Hmm? But what is our condition? Hmm? Avidya. The above, the absence of awareness of, Krishna. of God. Yes, yes. So, because this anadya vidya yuktasya purusasyatma vedanam we are in a vidya not only of God but even in a vidya purusasyatma vedanam of our, of our own self. Atma. Hmm? Though we are spiritual beings mama ivang so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanata see Krishna said every soul is my angsa my vibhinaksa, my separated subjective portion. But we are thinking we are this physical body. So we are not aware of God and not aware of our own self even. This is the state of avidya. And that state is anadi. Anada vidya yuktasya, no beginning. That means there's no, uh, it has no material cause. And so it's very significant because our condition state has no material cause. So there's, that means there's nothing we can do uh, materially hmm, to remove it. Hmm? We are identifying with the body and mind. What what can we do? That which has which is a, an effect which has no beginning. Then there's nothing we can do to remove that. So Krishna said, "Sutho na sambhavat." Therefore, the living being who is in avidya, it is impossible for him to get out. But, sotona sambhavet anyas tattva gyo gyanado bhavet. If there is another person who is a, mm, has a, a tattva gyan, has knowledge of truth, then that person who has knowledge of truth can give that to the conditioned soul. So this is the essence of guru tattva. We cannot become free from our ignorance by our own efforts or by the help of friends or combination of both. But if there were to be such a person who is not in avidya, who has realization of Krishna, that person can bestow that knowledge upon us. So that person is called Sri Guru. So in the Upanishads it is said, Yasya Devi Parabhakti Priyata Devi Hmm? That just for one who is dedicated to the service of God, if a person is only to that person who has similar devotion to his Guru, hmm? one should not be less, have less devotion to Guru Dev than to Krishna himself. So only to that person, then hmm, all the mysteries of the Shastra, of Veda, Vedanta, Upanishad, especially of Srimad Bhagavatam, they become Prakashanti Mahatmana, revealed into the heart of that person. 
So Upanishads have said this, but in the Padma Purana, it has been expressed more emphatically. In Padma Purana, one devotee is praying. Bhakti yata haro meisti tadvaristam guru yadi mamasti tena satena sandar shaitu me hari. A devotee is praying, O oh my Lord, if as I am devoted to you, I have same devotion to my Guru. No, I have more devotion to my Guru than I am devoted to you. Then if this is true, then my Lord, kindly reveal yourself to me. And then Bhagavan gave his darshan to that devotee. So, Sila Jiva Goswami Pad explained that this person, there is a Sadharan Guru Sevak, ordinary servant of Guru, and there is the Vishesh Guru Sevak special servant of Guru, that is the one for whom he considers that not that I am practicing 64 angas of bhakti and among 64 angas of bhakti one of them is Guru Seva but he considers that Guru Seva is Angi I am just doing Guru Seva and all my hearing, chanting, remembering is just different parts of service to my Guru that person is called Vishesh Guru Sevak. And that type of devotion to the spiritual master brings the very rapidly realization. Krishna is very quickly controlled by a person who has such dedication to his Diksha Guru and to his Shiksha Gurus in this way. So, I want to give one example from the histories of our great Acharyas, of example of Guru Sevak, a great disciple. Perhaps you know that oh, about a thousand years ago, actually now it's the uh, very thousandth anniversary is coming up of Ramanuja Acharya. Mm. So he was teaching in Sri Ranga and he had many disciples. And he was instructing them. And one day, one of his very main disciples, named Kuresh, he approached his Gurudev and gave pranams. He said, Oh Gurudev, if I am qualified, be merciful to me and instruct me in the meaning of Sri Krishna's final instruction of Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dharman Parityajya Mame kam shanam braja aham tam sarva papi vyo mokshai shami ma suchaha. Basically, Krishna is saying, Oh, abandon all dharma which is related to the physical body and to the subtle material mind. And the essence of yourself, surrender to me. I will protect you from all karmic reactions, all sins. Don't fear anything. So, here see Krishna is speaking about Charnagati Tattva, surrender. It's very, very deep, very deep. Don't think I, I read that verse. One should deliberate on it very profoundly. Ramanuja Charya, he said to Koresh, only a person who leaves all other activities, and has no independence whatsoever. And he's staying with his Gurudev 24 hours a day for one year and serving without any desires at all, only serving to please Gurudev after one year, then that person, he can have the Shravan Adhikar. That's the eligibility to hear the explanation of this verse. Hmm? So think about it. Hmm? Transcendental spiritual subject is not just a discussion. Hmm? Gurudev will say something, you will listen to something, talk about it like that. No. There's a Shravan Adhika is involved. The eligibility to hear. Because everyone's mind is in different state of gunas. Hmm? Modes. Yeah, different modes. Some persons are more in Tamagun, some persons in Rajagun, some person in Satogun, and according to the Guna, 
will hear and will interpret uh, the words of Shastra and the words of Guru in a particular way, which will not be the meaning. That will not be the meaning. In, Bhagav, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Krishna said, Kaivalyam sakut satvikam dhyanam rajo vaikaupitam chayat prakritam tamasam dhyanam mannistam nirgunam smritam He said that in the mode of goodness you can have knowledge of kaivalya. That is to understand, you know, that this material energy it is all the different transformations of prakriti. Mm. From prakriti all the elements have come and they're making different shapes like bubbles in the ocean which appear and disappear. Mm. So at the, at the bottom of everything actually it's just one energy everywhere. Mm? But we are seeing dualities. So someone who is in Sattvagun Kaivalyam Sakutam Gyanam they will have knowledge everything is one. Everything is same. And they become peaceful. Mm? And those who are in Rajagun mm. Then, Rajo Vaikaupitam Chayat. Then, their intelligence is analyzing everything and finding dualities, finding polarities and priorities, and constructing different. Their, their thoughts are constructed in this way of polarities and priorities, and in this way they analyze the names and forms of the material energy to try to understand it. So, this is Rajasic knowledge. But this knowledge, from this you cannot find out anything about God. You cannot find out anything about the soul. Mm -hmm. Only, always doubt is there, confusion is there. Sankalpa vikalpa. Mm -hmm. And then, prakritam tamasam jnanam. Then there is knowledge in the mode of ignorance. That means only gross physical things. Huh? How to build a house, how to drive a car, how to make a sandwich. Mm. All these things, it's just knowledge in the mode of ignorance. Yeah? But Krishna said, Mannistam nirgunam smritam. But knowledge about me is a nirgun. Nirgun. Beyond three gunas. So it cannot be understood by a person whose mind is oscillating and always hmm? in Tamagun we become angry. In Rajagun we're always thinking how to make money. Hmm? In Satvagun. We feel peaceful and complacent that we know everything. Mm. Huh? So all these people, they can never learn anything. They have to do what? Sarvadharma Mparityaja. Surrender to Gurudev. And without any independence, without any worldly desires. One year. Huh? Huh? Serving, serving, serving. Slowly, slowly, all these oscillations of the mind, they calm down and the mind becomes peaceful. Then when Gurudev speaks about Krishna, then from this Shabda Brahma, this transcendental sound, then the Swarup of Krishna becomes manifested in the heart. Gurudev will say, there's Krishna, surrender to him. Huh? Then you understand what it means. Sarva Dharmam Prachaja. Mame Kam Shamam Prachaja. Really to surrender to see Krishna. Hmm? So one of the says, one year, just stop everything. Just be with me in the ashram. Kuresh said, but Gurudev, who can guarantee that they will live for another 12 months? No one can guarantee. I may die before 12 months and then I'll never know the meaning of this verse of Bhagavad Gita. Please find another way, explain another way by your mercy that the, the meaning of this verse can appear in my heart just soon, very soon. So then Ramanuja Chari, he smiled. And he thought for a, time, a while. Then he said, all right. What you should do is this. Every day you should go out and beg. And whatever comes from begging, whatever food comes, or whatever wealth comes or anything, you just live by that. And gradually, if you do this for one month, Hmm? Never keeping anything. Don't keep anything. Not Don't keep any money. Don't keep any food for the next day. Just each day be completely dependent on the mercy of Krishna. Hmm? And if you be fully dependent on the mercy of Krishna in this way, then after one month, hmm, gradually, gradually, 
ego will go down hmm? and then I will explain to you the meaning of this verse. Hmm? Because this it's prakritai kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasaha ahankara vimudatma karta ham miti manyate all the activities of this world they're going on because three gunas are moving. Jagrat swapta sushuptuncha gunato buddhi brittayaha ta sam vilakshano jiva shakshitvena vinishtitaha. Krishna said, You wake up in the morning. <sighs> Why? Satvagun. Satvagun, only the Satvagun is rising and it causes you to come into the waking state. And after some time you become tired, then Rajagun makes you dream. Then Tamagun makes you go into Shupti, into deep sleep. Then Rajagun makes you dream again, then Satvagun makes you wake. Like puppets. We are going through waking state, dreaming state, deep sleep state and back again. Backwards and forwards every day. Like puppets. So Krishna said, Prakite Kriyamana Igune Karmani Savasha. In this world, three gunas are causing everyone to act according to their karma, according to their acquired nature. But out of ahankar, false ego, avidya, everyone is thinking, I am the doer. I am very important, I am special, I am better than this one. Like this. Oh, completely false ego. How powerful is this? So Ramanuja Charya told him, forget everything. Forget about tomorrow. And each day only live by begging. After one month, come back to me and I'll explain this verse to you. So Qureshi did this for one month. And then he came back to his Gurudev and he came before his Gurudev. Oh, with shining eyes, and purified heart, no worry, no anxiety in the world. Huh? Now he's ready, he has Ravana ready to hear. Huh? If you are full of anxieties, you cannot hear. I am sorry. But the transcendental words will bounce off one. Huh? Oh, Gurudev, please tell me. Then he put up a shield. Ego is there like a shield and Gurudev is speaking, everything is bouncing off. Nothing going inside. Now, after one month, his heart was open and he listened to the explanation and he was in ecstasy. He was in bliss. Hmm? If we have Shravanadikar, when we chant the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Then you can see the lotus feet of Krishna. So then, this Kore, she was very happy. And his god, he had a god brother named Dasarati. So Dasarati was actually a relative of Ramanujacharya, but he was also his disciple. And he was a young man, but he was a very famous and very learned, brilliant scholar, Pandit of Sanskrit and Pandit of Shastra. So when he saw his god brother Koresh was in such bliss, then he asked him, what happened? So when he heard, then he thought, I also want to hear from Gurudev the explanation of this verse. So then Dasarati, he went to Ramanuja Acharya and he bowed down. Oh Gurudev, please can you explain to me the meaning of this verse? Sarva Dharma Amparitya Jamami Kam Ramanuja Acharya, he looked at his disciple and relative. He said, actually, you know, because mm, we are related, then when I look at you, if you have some fault, I tend to overlook the fault. Hmm? You know, other people, we may see faults in them, but our own family, we think, oh, we can overlook, we can tolerate so many problems. Huh? If someone will insult us, we become angry with them. But if your own family will insult you 24 hours a day, but no problem. You don't become so angry. <laughs> we make special allowances, special concessions for the family members. So Ramanujacharya, 
he was saying. Uh, because my tendency is to overlook fault in you, but it's the it's the duty of guru to remove even the last the speck of defect from the heart of the disciple. So I am suggesting to you, you should go and you should learn this verse from one great Vaishnava. His name is uh, Gosti Purna. Go to him and you can ask him. So then Dasarati was very happy and he left Shirangam and he went to another village. And there he took shelter of his Shiksha Guru, Gosti Purna. So he asked him, can you tell me the meaning of this verse? Dharma Pritsadhyaya. Goes to Purna, just stay in the ashram and do service for six months and I'll tell you. So then he was staying, he was doing service. After six, six months, passed. but still, Goes to Purna had not told him the meaning of this verse. So then he approached him. He said, Oh Gurudev, can you explain the verse to me? So then Gosti Puna, he took pity on him. He said, you have to know that although it's true that you are a great scholar, but scholarship cannot help you. Scholarship will not save you if you are proud. Sri Kunti Devi has said in Srimad Bhagavatam, she prayed to Sri Krishna. Janmaishwarya Suta Sribi Aida Mana Madapaman Naiva Hatta Bidatambai Tamma Kinchana Gochara. O Krishna. Those persons who are proud of their birth, I am born in a very aristocratic family. Those persons who are proud of their wealth, I have so much bank balance and so many properties. Then Maiswarya Sutta, those persons who are proud of their education, I have a degree, two degrees, MA, PhD. Mm -hmm. Those persons who are Jan Maiswarya Sutta, Sribi, Sribi, who are proud of their beauty, then I am very handsome, I am very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So those persons, they cannot chant the holy name sincerely. They cannot take shelter of Krishna because they take shelter of their own qualities, take shelter of their own temporary ego. Hmm? So they cannot chant the holy names it's from the core of the heart. So she said, Tamakin Chanagochara, O Krishna, you are the property of that person who feels that he has no property at all. Hmm. They're akinchan, niskinchan. Nothing is mine. O Krishna, I have nothing, nothing is mine, everything is yours. Hmm? Even my own soul is not mine, my soul belongs to you. Those persons can chant sincerely. So Ghosti Purna said to him that if a person is narrow-minded, then when they have learning, that learning makes them become proud. But if someone is very pure-hearted, then there's no harm if they have learning of Shastra, then it helps them become detached from this world and all good qualities manifest in that person. Then he said, I cannot help you. You should go back to the ashram of your Gurudev Ramanujacharya. So Dasrati was devastated. He had gone to his Guru and his Guru would not teach him. He had sent him to a Shiksha Guru. Now his Shiksha Guru would not teach him also. And he was thinking, oh, why? Because they're seeing something in me I'm not seeing. We cannot see our own faults, actually. Mm. We cannot see our own faults. That's why we have to take shelter of Guru Dev. Diksha Guru, Shiksha Guru, take shelter there. They can see and they know how to do open heart surgery and remove that problem. So he was traveling back from the ashram of the Goshi Puna and coming back to Shirangam to Brahmanujacharya. In the meantime, there was one young lady. Her name was Atulai. She was the daughter of a devotee named uh, Mahapurna. So Atulai, she just come to 
the ashram of Ramanuja Acharya, and she was crying, she was in great distress. And she bowed down there, and Ramanuja Acharya said, well, What is wrong? Why are you so upset? She said, Well, I was married and I went to live with my in laws. But my mother in law, she's very cruel. She makes me travel every day to bring water from a place which is two miles away. Every morning and every evening I have to go with clay pots and fill them with water and carry them two miles there, two miles back, and the road is very rough. Hmm? And uh, then when I come back I have to do the cleaning and do the cooking and everything and I became completely exhausted. I am having a nervous breakdown. So I told her, this is very difficult for me. But she had no compassion at all. She became angry with me. She said, hmm? why, if it's a problem, then when you came from your father's house, why didn't you bring a servant with you? I cannot afford to get another servant and pay the servant to do work while you sit around all day doing nothing. So the mother-in-law had no compassion at all. And she was... She said, I was breaking down, so I went back to my father's house. But my father told me, go and see Ramanuja Acharya. He can advise you what to do. And so I have come here. Oh, Gurudev, what should I do? Just as she was telling this story to Ramanuja Acharya, then Dasarati arrived there at the lotus feet of Ramanuja Acharya. So then Ramanuja Acharya was thinking. And then he looked. Oh, you have returned. Then he said, I can solve your problem. You should go back to your mother-in-law's house and I'll give you one servant who can fetch the water and help in the kitchen. Okay? Dasrati, go with her. <laughs> <laughs> so that Pandit, young Pandit, he just returned to his Guru's ashram and his Guru sent him away already. So now he went there. Every day he was walking for miles and carrying big pots of water, one, two, three on his head, over the hills, coming back. And he was cooking in the kitchen also. <laughs> right. It was order of Gurudev. Hmm? <clears throat> Agya Guru Nama Vicharaniya. Shastra said, one should not uh, deliberate. One should not speculate about the order of Gurudev. What Gurudev says, follow that. So he was just doing it with a nishta, Guru nishta, with strong faith in his spiritual master. So he was very humbly fetching the water every morning, every evening, and cutting vegetables and cooking in the kitchen. Mm. In that village, no one knew who he was. He was a nobody there. He's a cook. So he's a house, house help servant. One day, one pandit came there to that village and they made a big pandal and he was uh, telling Harikatha there. And all the villagers came. So at that time, then Dasarati, he was in the kitchen with his apron and he heard out, oh, everyone is going to hear some Harikatha. I did not hear some Harikatha for so many months, six months. I also, I also want to go and listen. So he went out from the kitchen and he went and he came and sat down with the crowd of people listening to the kata. So that Pandit was explaining Bhagavad Gita, but his knowledge was not paka. His knowledge was mixed with some impersonalism. So when Dasarati, he heard this misinterpretation, misunderstanding, and everyone was listening and thinking it was true. So then he couldn't tolerate it. He said, excuse me, no, no, it's not like that. And he mm, gave a suggestion. But when he interrupted, then that pandit became furious. He said, stop! Stop! Where is a jackal and where is Swargalok? Hmm? Can a jackal go to Swargalok? No. So who has ever seen a cook who can explain the Sanskrit scriptures? Hmm? So just be quiet. Go back to the If you want to show us your talents, go back to the kitchen and show us your talents in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So he was rebuked, chastised and humiliated in front of everyone. 
But now Dasarati had no anger, no ego at all. He did not become angry. He did not take offense. Smiling and very sweetly, he said, But sir, and then he began to explain the meaning of the verse. He gave so many examples from scripture and so many pramans, different evidence from different parts of the scripture. And it was so beautiful that even that pandit was amazed. Everyone was amazed. And the pandit, he got up from his Vyasasan and he went over to that cook and he gave pranam and took the dust from his feet on his head. He said, I am astonished. You are a cook, but you are so learned in all the scriptures. Who are you? Hmm? And what are you doing here, serving in the kitchen? He said, my name is Dasarati, and I am a disciple of Ramanuja Acharya. I am here serving in kitchen because my Gurudev told me to do it. And the order of my Gurudev, that is my pran, that is my life and soul. I take the order of Gurudev as my life and soul. What he's telling? I am just following that. Huh? Then the whole crowd became astonished. Ah, we never knew. This this cook is the famous pundit, Dasarati. And the whole village, they got together and they traveled. They left him there, but they traveled to Sri Rangam. And they came before Ramanuja Acharya. And they said, oh, Ramanuja Acharya, your disciple is there in our village because you have put him in the kitchen. But there's no need for him to be there anymore. Really, he's a Paramahamsa, completely free from ego, very humble and pure. Please give us the order and we'll put him on a palanquin and with kirtan and a big celebration. Let's bring him from our village and bring him back to your lotus feet in Shiranga. Ramanujacharya said, no, don't bring him here. I'll go there. Let's go together. So then with Kirtan, Ramanuja Acharya and all the villagers, they set out from Shirangam and they went there. And as they were arriving in the village, then Ramanuja Acharya saw his very humble and dedicated disciple Dasarati coming over the hills, carrying the pots of water on his head and sweating. Uh, and when he came in, he put them down and gave pranam at the feet of his Gurudev. And see, Ramanuja Acharya embraced him. And he said, now, you should come, come back with me to Sri Ranga. And from today, your name will not be Dasarati. I am changing your name. Your name will be Vaishnav Das. Vaishnav Das Prabhu Ki. Jai. Because he became purified by serving the Vaishnavas under the guidance of his spiritual master. Then Ramanuja Acharya explained to him the meaning of the verse Sarvadharmam Pritjaja Mamekam Sharam Praja and Dasarat Now Vaishnav Das he became perfect and always blissful, always joyful in the service of the Supreme Lord. Yeah. So if you want to be happy in your life then try to be under the guidance of your Guru Dev, Tiksha Guru, Shiksha Guru, and very humbly serve. Gradually the Shravan Adhikar will come, ego will begin to subside. The eclipse which is covering the moon of our heart will subside. And the Shravan Adhikar, the power to hear will come. And when we are hearing, then we can realize something. You can see that Ramanuja Acharya would not very easily give instruction in this verse of Bhagavad Gita because he considered, oh, they're not, disciples are not ready yet. Uh, they'll have to be more surrendered, more service, more purified of heart, then they'll understand. Just to understand this verse of uh, Bhagavad Gita, then what kind of adhikar the disciple will need to understand a verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, like Venugit. 
Gopyastapa Kimachirad Kushalam Sobenu Damodaradar Sudam Api Gopikanam Bhumte Swayam Yadabasisara Sambradinyo Prishattu Chosu Mumuchustara Voyatariyaha We hear from our Guru Varga how in beautiful Brindavan during the daytime Sri Krishna goes out to the forest to take the cows to graze and Radhika, Lalita, Vishaka, Braji Gopis are staying in their homes and from far away they can hear Sri Krishna playing on his flute. Gopyaki Machra Dayam Kushalam Swabenu And they cry. When Gopi is telling her friend, Ah, what austerities did this flute perform in a previous life? Hmm. Hmm? They have Isha, jealousy, towards the bamboo flute. What austerities did this flute perform in a previous life? That this flute is always tasting the nectar of the lips of Damodar Krishna. Hmm? So, uh, why are gopis here saying Damodar? Damodar means Krishna who was bound by his mother with ropes when he was a little baby. The implication is this. We gopis, we know Krishna since he was a little baby. Hmm? But this flute is just a piece of bamboo. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is there a seat for Prabhu? Yeah. Oh, we know Krishna since he was a little baby. But this flute, he just came on the scene a few months before. Mm. How is it possible that he became so close to Krishna? That Krishna is holding him in his hand all the time? keeping him in his belt, sometimes tucking his flute in his mm, turban even. Even at night he sleeps with the flute underneath his pillow. This flute staying with Krishna all the time. Not only that, hmm? and drinking the nectar of Sri Krishna's lips. Hmm? When that nectar, apigopikanam, it belongs to us. I don't know what austerities the flute has done. If I could find out, which parikrama the flute has done in his previous life, which holy places the flute has bathed in his previous life, what austerities, vrats he's done in the previous life, then I'll do those austerities myself, so that in my next life, I can always stay close to Krishna and drink the nectar of his lips. Actually, Braj Gopis are glorifying the, the flute of Krishna. And they're trying to hide their own mood of love. But when they say, Sudam, the nectar of Krishna's lips, then their secret is coming out. Hmm? Their secret is coming out. How do they know that Krishna's lips are like nectar? Mm. Hmm? This nectar belongs to us, not to this flute. Why? Because we are gopis and Krishna is a gop. We are, Krishna is our neighbor. We are born in the same village in the same caste. So the nectar of Krishna's lips belongs to us. This flute is born in a family of trees. That's a different caste. So if someone is from a different caste, they should not have a relationship, romantic relationship with someone from another caste. Like this. Oh, this flute also is Venu. Venu, this word Venu is masculine. So, feminine person can drink the lips of a masculine person, but a masculine person should not drink the lips of a masculine person. Gopis are saying. So, Bhumte Swayam Yadavashishta Rasam Radinyo. And just see, when Krishna plays upon the flute, then this flute is drinking all the nectar of Krishna's lips and not leaving even one drop for us. Because this flute is very, very greedy. 
Hmm? Actually, gopis are very greedy to taste the nectar of Krishna's lips. But they're seeing their own bhav in the flute. Though the flute is not even alive. Hmm? This flute is drinking every drop and not leaving anything for us. Alas, alas. Hmm? And just see, when Krishna plays the flute, then the lotus flowers in the rivers are blossoming. Hmm? It is as if the, the goddess of the river is smiling and looking at Krishna. And also the trees on the bank, they from the the honeycombs in their branches, honey is dripping and it looks as if the trees on the bank of the river, they're crying in ecstasy. Seeing, oh, our relative, our descendant, his life is so successful because the rivers are considered to be like the mother of the flute. Because flute is bamboo and who feeds you is like your mother. So because the bamboo is growing by drinking the water of the river, so river is like mother and the trees they're like the um, father's family because the bamboo is coming from the family of trees. So gopis are saying, just see, the whole family of the flute is in ecstasy. But what about us? If we go and taste the nectar of Krishna Krishna's lips, then all our families will become furious. Mm. They'll become very angry with us. So this flute is so fortunate and we are so unfortunate. Mm. Or they're saying, Risakta chosru mamukus tarabo yatarya. Arya means the mm, Guru Jana, the elderly persons of the family. So gopis are saying the trees are crying like the older persons of the family. Why? Because the old ladies like Jyotila, when they see how young and beautiful Krishna is when he's playing his flute, gopis are thinking they cannot help it, but they also become attracted to him. And they start to cry, oh, why am I so old? I wish I was born later if I were younger. <laughs> then I could so, meet with Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> All so in this way, the Mahabhav, the Prem of Gopis is so powerful that they become jealous of the mm, bamboo flute of Krishna. That they start to see their own bhavs in all the trees and rivers. In speaking like this, if Ramanujacharya will tell his disciple, you are not qualified to hear Sarvadamam Parichajya, you have to surrender and serve more, then what is the adhikari for hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam like this Vainu Geet? Really? This is very great Rahasya. What to speak of Vainu Geet? What a Gopi Geet? In Gopi Geet, Braj Gopis are weeping, especially Radhika in the end. She said, Yate sujata charanam buruham staneshu Bhita shanai priyadadi bahika kaseshu Taina tabimma tasita dvata taina kimswit Kurpadi bhi brahmati di Krishna has disappeared from the Rasalila and the Braj Gopis have become mad in separation. Sometimes talking to the trees, sometimes talking to the flowers. Oh, have you seen where Krishna has gone? Finally, they came on the bank of Jamuna and they were crying and glorifying Krishna together. And when Radhika could no longer stay alive, she said, Yate sujat charanam buruham staneshu. Oh Krishna, your lotus feet are very, very soft. Very soft. Like a newly blossomed lotus flower. And when I am alone with you in the beautiful kunjas of Vrindavan, and I hold your lotus feet, and I place them on my heart, then I place them there very, very gently. Because I think that my chest is very rough and hard. It may injure your soft lotus feet. Who can understand such bars? Hmm? Once there was a devotee and he came to our Keshaji Gaudemat in Mathura and he saw the shoes of Srila Gurudev outside every day. He would leave his shoes outside the room and go inside. So he saw they were broken stock shoes 
and they were a bit old. So he thought, I'll get some new Birkenstock shoes and I can steal these and keep these shoes for myself and I'll put the new ones there. So he stole Gurudev's shoes and put exactly the same, same color, same size, everything and kept them. <laughs> so next morning after chanting Japa, she looked, in the early morning, Gurudev came out and looked down and saw, oh. <laughs> <laughs> then he looked at that devotee and he knew it was you. <laughs> then Gurudev said, I never tried to do this to my Gurudev, to take his things. Hmm? Said, Gurudev said, I never wanted these things. I only wanted my Gurudev's bath. So this is why we try to surrender and serve Gurudev. If Sarva Dhammam Parichadya, it will be so difficult to understand. Then what to speak of Gurudev's bhavs? Venu Geet, Gopi Geet. Huh? Only when the disciple completely empties his heart from everything, all personal motivation. Srila Gurudev used to say, become empty like Krishna's flute. If there's a flute which is has anything inside it is blocked, then there's no music. It has to be completely empty, then the musician can play a very sweet tune. So in the same way, when the disciple gives up all concept of Ahamma Meti, I and mine, and serves Gurudev, Nishkapadna Nishwarta Guru Seva, without any selfishness, without any duplicity, his heart becomes empty, then Gurudev can fill the heart of the disciple with his own powers. Disciple must mix his heart completely with the heart of Gurudev. And then the transcendental nectar, which is not any idea of Satvagun, not any idea of Rajagun or Tamagun, Nirgun, not only Nirgun, Vishuddha Sattva, Shuddha Sattva, Vishay Shatma, Prema Suryangsu Samyavak, Ruchi Bischatama Srina Krida Sobhav Uchate. Bhav is the Vishuddha Sattva, essence of Sambit and Ladini. Then from the heart of Guru David can come Prachodayat. It can appear in our heart. Then we can realize what is this? Yate sujata charanam buruham staneshu. Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami gave us some hint in, in Chaitanya Charanamrita. He wanted to describe about love of birds, gopis. But it's very high, so he gave a hint with another example. He said, Anga stambam rangamutangayantam premanandam daruko nabhyanandat kamsarate vijane yena sakshad akshodiyan antarayovyadai. One day in Dwarka, See Krishna's charioteer, the driver of Krishna's chariot, his name is Daruka. He was fanning Krishna with a chaman. It was hot and Daruka was fanning Krishna. But as he was fanning him, he became in such ecstasy that he began to tremble and he was stunned and could not move. But then when he realized, actually he became stunned and he lost sense. He went out of consciousness in ecstasy. And then after some moments, he came back into external consciousness and realized, ah, it's very hot and I stopped fanning Krishna. And he began to criticize his own ananda, <laughs> criticize his own ecstasy. What's the use of this ecstasy? I don't want, I don't want, because it becomes an obstacle to my service. Premanand jadi nija sevanand bade seyanandera prati bhaktir hoy mahakrode. So Krishna Das Kavraj Goswami Pati said, Premanand jadi nija sevanand bade. If one's own premananda, the ecstasy of love, becomes an obstacle to service, then the devotee becomes angry with his own ecstasy. Hmm? So in the same way, Yat Teisu Jat Charnam Buru Hamstaneshu. 
When Radhika takes the lotus feet of Sri Krishna, she feels such ecstasy. Her whole body becomes covered in a repulation. Radhika's body is very smooth. But by the touch of Krishna's lotus feet, her whole body becomes very rough with her repulation. And then she thinks, oh, very carefully hold your lotus feet on my heart. And she's criticizing her own ecstasy. Even. Hmm? Because she only wants the happiness of Krishna. Even though Krishna is happy, but she's always, she has that Tatsukaipya Tashankaya. One of the symptoms of Rudha Mahabhav is even when Krishna is completely happy, completely pleased with her service, but she has an anxiety that somehow or other he's undergoing some inconvenience. I am not serving nicely. Huh? So these parts in the heart of Gurudev, Venu Geet, Gopi Geet, what to speak of? Vilap Kusamanjali. Sila Gurudev often he used to say, Tam Rupa Manjari Saki Pratita, Si Rupa Manjari Karachita Pada Padma, Gostenda Nandana Bujapita Mastakaya, Ha Modataka Nakagori Padara Venda, Sambahanani Shanakai Stavakim Karisiri. If Radhika is taking the lotus feet of Krishna on her heart, who can see it? Lalit and Vishaka will have to be far away. But Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, they will be outside the Kunjan, looking through the lattice windows of a Kunja Bhavan. Pranaimayara Bayasya Kunjarandra Pitakshi Chitital Manura Labda Nanda Murchambatanti Pratirata Vidadhanu Chitstita Chitra Chitra Smaranibitani Kunje Radhika Krishna Chandro And as they offer their eyes to the lattice windows of the Kunj and look inside at the beautiful loving pastimes of Radha Krishna or the maid servants of Radhika Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, they become so overwhelmed with love. They faint and fall to the ground in ecstasy. Hmm? Then when they open their eyes and wake up, then they criticize themselves. Oh, what am I doing lying here? Perhaps I have missed the chance to do some seva. And when Radhika keeps her head in the, in the lap of Sri Krishna, then Rupa Manji comes and massages the lotus feet of Radhika. Because Krishna is still energetic, he wants to play some more pastimes, but Radhika is too tired. So massage is refreshing. So Krishna is very pleased, Radhika is pleased by the service, and Krishna is pleased by the seva. And Raghunath Taska Swami is looking in the form of Rati Manjari, looking at Rupa Manjari. And from her heart, she is begging for Uchishta seva. Uchishta means remnant. Just like when Gurudev is taking prasadam, then the disciple is very eager. Or oh, will there be any uchishta, some remnant on Gurudev's plate that I can take? Hmm? Hmm? So the significance of the disciple hankering for the uchishta, the remnant of Gurudev's plate, the inner significance is that Satsisya, the bona fide disciple, is hankering for the Uchista Seva, the remnant of the service that Gurudev is re rendering to the lotus feet of Radhika. This is the meaning. So, Raghunath Taskaswam is praying to his Shiksha Gurudev in Siddha form. Hmm? Oh, Rupa Manjri, when you are massaging the lotus feet of Radhika, hmm, then at that time, will you, when you have not finished the service, will you leave some Uchista, some remnant of this service for me? Hmm? And then by her eyes, Rupa Manjari glanced towards Rati Manjari, come, and kept the lotus feet of Radhika in the lap of Rupa Manjari. And then Rupa Manjari was massaging Radhika, Rati Manjari was massaging Radhika, and Rupa Manjari took up a chamra and began to fan. Hmm? Hmm? So if it's hmm, not so easy to understand the meaning of Sarvadamam Parichajya, then what to speak of understanding the bhavs of Venugit? But more than this, the, bha the bhavs of Gopi Git, and ultimately the bhavs of Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Swami, 
एक्सप्रेस दिन वेल आपको समझी दिस इज द ट्रेजर ऑफ आवर गुरुदेव हार्ट दिस इज आवर एम ए प्रयोजन एम एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ सो इफ द ग्रेट डिवोटीज लाइक सत्य काम एंड उपमन्यु एंड दशरथी एंड अदर्स इन प्रीवियस एजेस दे कुड गिव देयर होल लाइफ टू द सर्विस ऑफ देयर गुरु टू लर्न द तत्व द सिद्धांत ऑफ भगवद गीता देन व्हाट टू स्पीक ऑफ अस व्हेन गुरुदेव इज गिविंग द हाई सर्विस ऑफ द लोटस फीट ऑफ राधा एंड कृष्ण हाउ मच मोर वी शुड बी वेरी एंथुसियास्टिक to do shanagati guru seva vaishnav seva and then by their mercy be blessed with the realization of their ecstatic paths sila guru dev ki jai vale vrindavan vihari lal ki jai vare saniwal ki jai 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 sri radhe shri gaur premanand dev ki